I was two and a half years old when my mom was screaming at the top of her lungs. My parents and I were on a weekend trip to Big Bear Lake. My dad, Eddie, jumped into the boat, I mean, jumped into the water to swim. But it wouldn't be long before my mom started screaming. So I looked to the side of the boat, and I noticed that she threw him either a towel or an oar. I'm not really sure. But my dad tried to grab onto it, and he couldn't. He went underwater. He never came back up. He drowned right in front of us. I remember people helping us get to the shore. And as I jumped out of the boat, I looked down, and I saw my yellow tennis shoes with monkeys painted on them, an image I'll never forget. We were then escorted to an area where we waited for the dive team to recover my dad's body. It's taken me a lifetime to learn this, but one thing I know for sure is that we don't have to drown in our circumstances. We can bloom where we're planted. Today, as I think about leadership my way, I realize that there are three secrets that have helped me turn a tragedy into an opportunity to lead authentically and powerfully. And my first secret, always push through. If you're drowning in your circumstances, it's never too late to start swimming. I remember my first husband and I were working in the grape fields in Sacramento. It was a hot summer day, and I remember family members and coworkers talking about the heat and all the bills they had to pay. And I remember I looked up from cutting those sticky grapes and I said to myself, Lori, if you don't do something about this situation, you're gonna be here 20 years from now. I immediately decided right then and there that I was no longer gonna work as a farm laborer. In fact, I decided that I was gonna go look for another job. My first husband wasn't too happy about that. But I landed a job at Del Monte Corporation, canning peaches and tomatoes. A better paying job with benefits. The only problem with Del Monte is that it was seasonal, and I was looking, was, I was looking for something with a little more stability. So one of my girlfriends suggested that I go and apply with her sister-in-law at Jack in the Box. So I did. I was real happy that the manager was willing to work around my school schedule because earning my GED was extremely important to me. So I started in the kitchen slicing and dicing tomatoes, making salads. But it wouldn't be long before I got promoted to manager, I mean to management. I was really excited about that management position because I knew my marriage was ending. And I would be raising my two children as a single mom. So I needed to start swimming. And that meant leaving the shore. Secret number two, just do it. Sometimes you're gonna have to swim against the current. Several years later, I decided I was gonna apply for the district manager position at Jack in the Box. I remember I arrived to the panel interview, nervous but excited. I had prepared for weeks for that very special day. In fact, I went and I bought a brand new suit. I got into the room, shook everybody's hands, smiled. I sat down and I answered all the questions. The interview was over, I left the room, and my supervisor comes out and she says, Laura, you did a good job. However, the panel feels like you need some more experience. So we're gonna, we're gonna continue to look for the right candidate. Uh, but by the way, would it be possible for you to supervise the market until we find the right candidate? <laughs> I 
I said, sure. At that time, the market was 21 restaurants in two states. I left that uh, meeting, I went downstairs, and I called my girlfriend. And I said, um, I told her how the interview went, and I said, you know, it went pretty good, however, they're, they're gonna look for the right candidate. And as soon as I said the right candidate, I said this. I said, wait a minute, I'm the right candidate. They just don't know it yet. I was given the title of acting dist district manager. But six months later, I was called to the office to talk to the regional vice president. And I was wondering what she wanted. And uh, she says to me, Lori, your, your results speak loud and clear of your leadership. And she says, I wanna, I wanna offer you the position. I almost fell on my seat. I'm like, you wanna offer me the position? And she says, yeah, I wanna offer you the position based on your results. You've done a fine job. And I'm like, do I have to have another panel interview? And she said, no, you got the job if you want it. I, I was told her, thank you. I ran downstairs to the restroom and I did the happy dance. I was so excited, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> now, the funny thing is, is I've gone on to be one of the top district managers at Jack in the Box. I can't imagine where I would be today if I didn't choose to demonstrate that I was the right candidate. See, we don't always get to control the situations that life throws our way, but we can control our response and what we make of those situations. Now, here's secret number three. Be real. Being real is what has allowed me to be the kind of leader that others can trust and follow. I recently received a thank you note from one of my employees. She says, jefa, which in Spanish is boss. She says, jefa, thank you for teaching me to be courageous, to be a great mom, and to be positive. You've taught me how important it is to have fi financial literacy. And you've also taught me that I have to believe in myself. Thank you for allowing me to be part of your team. Oftentimes, I'm, I get visitors to my market, to the district, and uh, people will come to me and say, hey, Lori, so what's your secret sauce? Like, why do your people, like, they work really hard for you, and they're always smiling. And I tell them the secret is I lead with my heart. <clears throat> I lead with my heart. I tell them, I talk to them about my life story and my life experiences. This allows me to talk to them about all kinds of things, not just how to make hamburgers and french fries. I recently held a leadership class. It was in October of 2015. And I had three, three girls in the class that, uh, you know, in their introductions, because I have them do introductions, were telling me stuff like, you know, I'm a teen mom and high school dropout. And it kind of bothered me. I, we, we, con we continued the class, but it kind of bothered me. So I, I, I said, wait, you know, I can't do this. So I had, to, I had to take a pause and I said, look, who do you think is standing in front of you? I was a high school dropout. I was a teen mom. I was in and out of foster care. My first marriage was extremely rocky. And as a two and a half year old, I watched my father drown. And if I can overcome all my obstacles, you most certainly can. I finished the class. But something inside of me, I'm gonna just be honest with you, I was irritated. I said, I gotta do something about this. So on my drive home from Arizona back to California, I'm thinking, what am I gonna do? Because I cannot let these girls keep, have those things that happened to them, use them as excuses to keep them a prisoner of their past. So I got home, I said, well on the drive home, I said, you know what, I'm gonna write them a book. I'm gonna write my employees a book so they know that they can succeed. 
I got home, I went upstairs, I clicked on self-publishing school. It came with coaching. So my coach and I discussed my ideas. Now my idea for the book was multiple income streams for women. Because I knew from my past that a little extra income could solve some of their problems. But he said, Lori, after he heard my story, of course, he said, Lori, you want to write what? And I said, multiple income streams for women. He's like, with your story, you, you need to bleed on the pages. You have life experiences that your employees need to hear about. He said, your employees need to see that you're not just the leader that's in front of them, that you've also faced struggles just like them. So they can see you and be inspired that they, to see that they could be successful also. He said, you need to bleed on the paper, so I bled. Today I'm really happy to announce two of the girls went on to get their GEDs. The third, two of the girls went on to get their GEDs. One of them recently got promoted to assistant manager at Jack in the Box. And the third one is on her way to Paul Mitchell Cosmetology School. Now, I'm not unique. I just decided to lead with my heart. And we can all do that. You may have your own drowning story when you may ha have felt like you were sinking in fear, debt, or anxiety. That story can help you connect to the hearts of your employees. Today you may read my bio or book and think, how did I earn all those awards? The truth of the matter is this, that everything I have been able to overcome and accomplish has been supported by that day in the boat at Big Bear Lake when my father drowned. That tragic day was my dad's gift to me. Now, I didn't always see it that way. But I've come to realize that that day was the day that I began to develop empathy and compassion for those I would be able to lead and inspire. I'd like to leave you with this. No matter where you are today or what has happened to you, you can look beyond your current circumstances and thrive. You don't have to stay stuck because you can bloom where you're planted. <laughs>